Movie Museum, bringing you on television an exceptional collection of motion picture history, including many films screened for the first time in over half a century. A bustling 1910 business establishment. Note the painted skyscraper through the window. The not so hard working secretary is played by Florence Barker, one of the mainstays of the Biograph Company. In those days, a real estate office was called a land office, as you can see from the side. boss and the young assistant arrive. The boss is deflected, but the assistant goes in. The assistant is played by Owen Moore, who later became husband of Mary Pickford. Not many secretaries today get this cheery a good morning from the staff. Enter a tall client looking for a short lease on the secretary. were relatively new to office work in 1910, which may be why these lovers haven't learned the difficulties of conducting a romance on company time. If this office's land was as popular as the secretary, they'd be doing a land office business. Still another salesman. It's a plot to keep the lovesick hero in suspense. by George Nichols. The tall fellow is back for a renewal already. it's been a long day and the boss decides to leave. Or rather, he starts on a business trip and leaves the office and the secretary in Owen's hands. But he forgot his wallet and Owen volunteers to run after him. Don't get the idea that this is going to be a simple love story. Griffith, the director, is just setting up elements for a real crisis to come. See? A girl alone with an open safe. And enter the menace in the shape of a pencil peddler down on his luck. Played by Tim O'Sullivan, noted for hobo roles in those days. And 
so begins her terrible ordeal. The A.B. monogram on the scenery next to the de desk in the background meant American Biograph and was to protect the company from pirating of the picture. Got something else? His ticket? Perhaps. Anyway, he's got time for a quick beer. Note the extra on the left. Fur cape with standard attire for the traveling Shakespearean actor. It looks as though the only thing the boss did remember to take was the combination of the safe. but he can't quite catch the train on foot. Now notice this extra on the right as he moves out of the camera's way. The cameraman must have yelled at him. There. Only thing to do now is send a telegram. effort to make herself heard, she fires the gun. No matter if she's running out of air, now she can breathe gun smoke. What the boss forgot was some important papers. The picture was directed by the master, D.W. Griffith, and this is typical Griffith suspense, the office boy preening himself with a girl gasping her last a few feet away. Owen finally gets the word that the boss came back. Artificial respiration done standing up. And now for Owen's reward. Watching Florence in the boss's arms. No 
the boss catches on after all. He tells them to take five minutes to get reacquainted. And rushes back to the station. He'll never catch that same train. As we've so often said, Griffith could pack an awful lot into one ten-minute, one-reeler.